The uh, Lorentz Strange Attractor, perhaps the world's most famous and extensively studied ordinary differential equations, they were discovered in 1963 by an MIT mathematician and meteorologist, Edward Lorentz. They started the field of chaos. Uh, they're famous because they, they're they sensitive to the their initial conditions. Small changes in the initial conditions have a, a big effect on the solution. Lorentz is famous for talking about the butterfly effect, how flapping of butterflies of wings can affect the weather. A butterfly wing, butterfly flying in Brazil can cause a tornado in Texas. Is a flamboyant version of a talk he gave. The uh, the equations are almost linear. There's two quadratic terms here. The the equations come out of a model of. Uh, f f fluid flow in the, uh, the, at the Earth's atmosphere is a, f is a fluid, but this range of parameters, the three parameters, sigma, rho, and beta, these are outside the range that uh, actually uh, represents the Earth's, uh, Earth's atmosphere. Um, we're going to take a look at these parameters. These are the most commonly used parameters, but we're going to be interested in other values of of um, a row as well. But I'm a matrix guy, so I like to write the equations in this form. Y dot equals AY. It looks linear, except A depends upon Y. Uh, so there's Y2, the second component of Y, appears in the matrix A. This helps, uh, helps me study the differential equations uh, in this form. This matrix form makes it, is convenient for finding the critical points. Put a parameter eta in place of y2. Try to make the matrix singular. That happens when eta is beta times the square root of rho minus 1. And then the null vector is the uh, critical point. If we take this vector as the starting value of the solution, then the solution stays there. Y prime uh, is zero. This is an unstable uh, critical point, and um, values near this solution uh, deviate the solution won't won't stay at the it won't stay near the solution in may of 2014 i wrote a series in blog post in my in cleves corner about the matlab ordinary differential equations suite and i included a the i used the lorentz attractor as a, an example, and I included a program called Lorentz Plot that I'd like to use here. Here's Lorentz Plot. Set the parameters. Set the initial value of the matrix A. Here's the critical, here's the critical point. Here's an initial value near the critical point. Integrate from 0 to 30. Use ODE 23. Uh, give, it, give it a function called a Lorentz equation. Capture the values T and Y. And then plot the solution. I'm going to do a plot with the three um, components offset from each other. And... Here's an internal function, Lorentz equation, that is called by ODE 23, and it continuously, every time it called, it modifies the matrix A and updates it with a 
new values of y2. So uh, let's run that function. And here's the output. Here's the three components of the Lorentz attractor, time series as functions of t. It's pretty hard to see what's going on here, except to say they start out with their initial values, oscillate around them, close to them for a little while, and then begin to deviate. And, and it's hard to see what they're doing. They're just oscillating in, the, in an unpredictable uh, fashion. We need another graphic to see what's really going on here. I want to run a program called Lorentz GUI, Lorentz Graphic User Interface. That's out of my uh, old, old book called, uh, this one is really out of numerical computing with MATLAB NCM. Okay, I hit the start button. Here are the two critical points in green. We started near the critical point. We oscillate around the critical point. And here is the orbit. This is just going back and forth. It oscillates around one critical point, then decides to go over and oscillate around the other for a while. It continues around this like this forever. This is not periodic. It never repeats. Now, the butterfly is associated with Lorentz in two ways. One is the butterfly effect on the, on the weather. Also, this plot looks like a butterfly. Now, I can grab this with my mouse and rotate it in three dimensions so I can get different views of the orbit. It's still being computed. We're adding more and more to the, the plot, and I can look at it from different, different points of view to uh, get some, uh, some notion of how this is uh, proceeding in three dimensions. It almost lives in two dimensions, but not quite. Earlier, we've seen solutions, differential equations with periodic solutions. Here, this isn't periodic. Just going like this for other. It's, it's, now this is perfectly, um, this isn't random. This is completely determined by the initial conditions. If I were to start it over again with those exact conditions, I, with those exact initial conditions, I'd get exactly this behavior, uh, but it's un but it's unpredictable. We, it's hard to say where this is going. I can clear this out and see the see the orbit continue to develop. Press stop. Uh, now I want to. Uh, Now I have a choice. This um, pull-down menu here allows me to choose other values of rho. 28 is the value of rho that is uh, almost always studied. But uh, there's a book by Colin Sparrow that I've referenced in my, uh, in my blog about periodic solutions to Lorentz equations. And let's take another value. Let me choose rho equal to 160 and clear and restart. Now this is, this settles down. After this, F an initial transient. Um, this is now periodic. So uh, this is not chaos. This is a this is a periodic solution. Uh, and these other values of rho, beside, and not rho equals twenty eight. That's chaotic. But these other values of rho give periodic solutions with different character. 
And that's a long, interesting story uh, that I talk about in my blog, uh, following the work of Sparrow.